All right, so I figured I'd make a, a quick video here just showing an update on my Browning Auto 5 project. Um, since, since the last video, I've, I've made some definite progress. Um, so what I have here is I have the, the forearm and the stock, which I have finished now. Uh, this is the, I think it's called the shockproof forearm that Numrich Gun Parts sells for the Auto 5. Um, and the main reason I bought this is, I think I mentioned in a previous video, it doesn't have the finger grooves, which I'm not really a fan of. It seems like they're placed too low. Um, so this was like a full profile. Uh, <clears throat> and then I also uh, cut this to a 13 and 3 quarter length of pull, and I installed the recoil pad. Um, what I ended up doing on this forearm is I ran it across the table saw, <clears throat> and I actually... I put grooves in it. As you can see here, there's six, six grooves on each side, uh, just cut shallow on the, on the table saw. And it turned out awesome. i just really happy how that turned out. It gives really good grip. You can see here, I also pinned. I drilled a hole and I, I pinned it. Uh, that's a ring shank nail set in epoxy. Um, just for further insurance against this forehand splitting out from heavy use. And I have it pinned right, right forward to where the barrel is going to be impacting the forearm. So I finished the forearm in the stock in this Danish oil medium walnut. And then I followed it up with this Tom's one third mix. Uh, bought this on eBay. I think you can buy it right from his website as well. Um, anyhow, it really happy how it kind of recreates kind of a military dull matte finish um, but it, it still looks really nice I, I think uh, aside from that <clears throat> I extended my magazine tube this was the this was the largest thing I did and um, it doesn't look the prettiest here as you can see it's kind of ground um, the reason for that is I first attempted to weld the magazine tube using my wire feed MIG welder and it just did not work. I had welding boogers on the inside of the tube uh, that wouldn't allow the follower shells to pass and I was burning holes and it just didn't work. So I had to grind off my ugly welds and then I had my nephew who has a TIG welder he actually TIG welded this um, and I think he did a pretty good job. I think it's 100% functional. Um, <clears throat> there is, there was a hole burned right here, but it shouldn't have any effect on the function. Um, it's smooth inside, um, shells feed fine. And let me back up a minute. I think I talked last video, but I actually purchased an additional mag tube from, again, from Numrich Gun Parts, Gun Parts Incorporated, and. <clears throat> cut the mag tube, cut both mag tubes and splice two together. So that's what we have here. We have two mag tubes spliced together, TIG welded together. Uh, appears to be a, a very strong welding job. So I'm really happy how that turned out. Again, it's a little bit cosmetically challenged due to my, <clears throat> due to my attempting to weld it first. Um, so anyhow, uh, a very pleasant surprise to me. I thought the mag tube was going to hold six total it actually holds seven total so instead of an auto five I now have an auto eight um, seven in the tube plus one in the chamber um, this is the original barrel I didn't want to cut the original barrel I just just didn't feel right cutting an auto five barrel uh, even though it's a Japanese barrel I still didn't want to cut it so I found this on eBay this is a Belgian auto five barrel I think it's about 18 and a quarter inches um, it's got some cosmetic issues. Um, my plan for this barrel, I'm going to remove the top part of the rib. The top part of the rib is, <clears throat> it's kind of bent up. So I'm going to cut the ventilated rib at each post and file, file it down smooth. And then I'm going to be left with kind of a very um, shallow solid rib. Um, that's my intention with this barrel, and then I'm going to mount this excess sight 
uh, the big dot tritium site. I'm going to mount that out on the front. So that's going to be my site. Um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with the metal. Uh, the, this shotgun had, you know, extensive bluing wear. Um, I th I'm thinking about either um, trying to parkerize it or possibly seracoding it in a parkerized uh, tight finish. So, not sure exactly what I'm going to do there with the metal finish, but I definitely intend on doing something with it. So anyhow, I'm going to just throw this shotgun together. I'm not going to put the recoil spring assembly in there or anything, but just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. Before I do that though, this this is a just a, simply a chunk of one inch PVC pipe that I painted matte black. Um, and you'll see exactly where that goes. So again, I'll just throw this together so you can get some idea of how, where the project's at and what it's going to look like. <clears throat> So there's the butt stock. So this is simply a spacer. Um, so I have the extended magazine tube, the cap still going out on the end. So that is my spacer. And I'm hoping, I believe, that this uh, PVC spacer will also add some shock absorbing properties to the recoil system. So, so there we have it. That's roughly what it's going to look like. Um, Got an Auto 8 extended magazine tube. Um, I'm really happy with the welded tube. Um, I don't think I have to worry about it coming unthreaded or possibly the weak point that a standard magazine extension is going to have. Um, really happy with the way the wood looks. So my intention from here on out, um, project's nearing an end. Like I said, I'm going to put the get rid of the top part of the rib, put the big dot sight on. I intend to put some uh, sling stud here in the side of the buttstock, a sling stud here in the side of the forearm. Um, I may mount a small uh, Picatinny rail right here for a light. Um, and then find out a, a way to refinish the metal kind of in a matte, matte finish. Um, but that's where we are so far. Um, really happy how it's turning out. Have any questions? Post them in the comments.